Hey, and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be going over functions in Autogen. So the question is, what is a function in the world of Autogen? Well, one way to look at it is it's a more defined uh, system message that also allows us to do something with the response. OpenAI API states that it allows you to get more structured data back from the model. Let's just look at the code and I'll explain what it means. All right, so the first thing I did here was I just created a directory under my AI project. I just called it autogen underscore functions. And the first thing we're going to do is look at the config file. So it's called OAI underscore config underscore list. So when we go here, all this is, is an array of JSON structured objects. And in each JSON object, we have, we define a model and an API key. So the first model is the 3.5 turbo model. You'll give it your API key that you can uh, get an open platform. And then I have another one for GPT-4, okay? And, and you can have any number of, you know, model objects that you want here that are defined. What we can do is in the Allergen file, we can choose basically which one we want. And I'll show you that next. Okay, now we're here for the actual file that we want to look at. All right, I know it can be a little daunting at first, but we'll go through this. I'll explain it. And I think you understand by the end. So the first thing is, is obviously we need to import Autogen. Now we need to uh, create a config list variable that's going to have the configuration for our LLM models. So what Autogen has, is it has some predefined functions that we can use. So this one has autogen.config list from JSON. We only need to define two properties. We we'll actually really need to define one, but the first one I'm going to define is env for environment or file. So you want to give it the file name, oai underscore config underscore list, which by the way, you can also say that it's a dot JSON file and you can, then you would just say dot JSON here, right? It, however you want to do it, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then this filtered dictionary, if you're not quite sure what this is, basically what I'm saying is I want to look for a property, one of the, one of the JSON objects in the array with a model of type GPT dash four. I want you to find that. And then I want to use that. So what this means is it's going to look for this for a model with GPT-4. It's going to grab that model and also the API key associated with it. And, and we would use that um, whenever we want to initiate this file to uh, start doing whatever it is that we want it to do. Okay. So I could say, you know, 3.5 dash turbo, and I would use that one instead. Okay. Now we're going to start getting into the functions and seeing what it is. Now I know that we've done an LLM config variable before that has some properties and they're really the same except for obviously the functions property here. Okay. So let's just go down through it. I'm going to go through each step and then we'll eventually go through the example and see exactly what it does. So I just set the temperature to zero. You don't have to have this property. I set the timeout to 300 seconds so or five minutes, uh, the cache seed, by default is 41. Um, I just set to 43 because I was testing things. The config list, you know, we just said the config list that we defined above. And now for the new one, functions. Okay, so I'm going to jump around for a minute so that we can see what this means. So as you can see, this functions, you first give it the brackets, meaning we can have an array of functions. You can have more than one defined function that we can use. And a function is really just a method call that we can have it do something. All right. So if we scroll down a little bit, you can see here that we created a function called ask underscore planner that receives one parameter that's called message. Okay. I'm not going to go, I'll go, I'll end up going through exactly what this is doing. Uh, but for now, I just want you to see that we've defined a method or a function called ask underscore planner. And now if we go back up to the functions property here, the first thing is, is we need the name of it and it's called ask underscore planner because that's what we define the function here. Now the description, whenever we have uh, an agent like execute this function, this is kind of like the persona or what we want it to do with the past in message that we want to give it. Okay. So we want to ask the planner to get a plan for finishing the task, verify the execution result of the plan or, and, or potentially suggest a new one. Okay. So we have a name description, and now we have a property of this function called parameters. Now that's essentially what it's saying, right? This is the parameter of the function, which would be this message here. So that when it says type object, 
Um, I, I've seen this all. It basically always say says type object. Um, I wouldn't really worry about this too much. It's, this is pretty much static from what I've seen. It doesn't really change. And so we move on to property. So this is the property of the parameter message. So as you can see here, properties of the first parameter, well, when they have one, it's called message. We want the type to be a string. So what's gonna be passed in here is some, uh, some string, okay? And the description of this message, this is what's gonna get, whenever we pass this in, whenever this message gets executed by something or some, or some agent, we want it to kind of be in this persona, right? We want the question to ask, we want the question that's passed in to ask the planner, make sure the question includes enough context, code, the execution result, um, and you know, et cetera. Okay, I'm not gonna need to go through that. But this is the description of the message that's being passed in and like kind of how we want it to be asked, okay? And then required is another property. This is just saying that it's gonna fail if we don't have, um, if we don't pass in some string into the function, okay? That we require the message. So if you, if this had, like if we had message and then like message underscore two, because the, uh, if we didn't have it required here, then, you know, it doesn't matter if we pass it or not, it, it, it'll still run. Now let's move on to what the function is actually doing. So what we want the function to do is we're, we're gonna create uh, two agents. We're gonna have one called planner underscore user, which is gonna be a user agent. So it's gonna be you or me. We want it to initiate a chat with the planner, which is an AI agent. We're gonna pass in the message from the function that's being called. Okay, so whenever we do that, something that you can do with function. Now, this is where there's a couple of things with functions, right, that are powerful is when we pass this message in, what we're saying in this next line is the, a last message variable. We're setting it to the last message received from the planner. So if the planner user is me. There's another, and we're initiating chat with a planner agent. So when we ask or we give some message to the AI agent, we want to return, we want to do something with the last message that that AI, AI agent gives back to me. And then when you do that, now you're more than welcome to do anything with that, right? Now in this function, we can do whatever we want with that though. So let's say it's giving us like a list of theme parks or a list of top 10 trips. Well, we could take maybe the first trip from that. We could, you could call now with this, we're inside a function, right? We can do whatever we want with that message. We could call another API like, I don't know, like say like Expedia, let's just, um, they probably have an API. I don't know, I never looked at it, but let's just say they have an API. We, so we could send uh, whatever, like say Paris, France is what it returned, right? For a trip, we could send that API over. Then we could have like a bunch of information for what you could do on that trip inside this function. And then we could uh, potentially return the response from Expedia. And then, you know, once we return it, whatever this is being called, we can do something else with that or maybe you wanna store the response in a database, okay? This will make more sense when we actually run this and I go through it, but um, just to kind of give you a little heads up of what you can do with the function is, this is like initiating, we're initiating a chat, right? And just like we always initiate chat with Autogen, you know, starts a conversation. Well, we're starting a specific conversation whenever this function is called and you had the power to do something with the response now, okay? Besides that, it can can be more structured as a open AI says it will be, we can also manipulate it. Now, all I'm doing, and I know it's gonna be boring, is I'm just printing, uh, I'm just doing some simple print statements so that you can also see where this is happening in the chat when we get there. Now, we're gonna move on to creating these agents that I just discussed, okay? So the we have two agents. We have the planner, which is an AI agent. So it's of type assistant agent. The name is planner. We ha we give it the config list and we give it a system message. Okay. So this is a long system message that you can read or that you'll copy from my GitHub. And then we have the planner user, which is a type user proxy agent. So that's you or me. And we just have the name planner user. Uh, I just have, I don't care about it replying and the human input mode is never. Okay. Because these two agents are part of this function call, okay? So planner user, 
as you can see, this is this is me initiating a chat with the planner based on whatever message that gets sent through here. Okay, so we have two agents that are revolving around that function, and now we're gonna create two more agents where we have like the actual initiating chat um, to start this AI agency. Okay, so we have a very simple AI agent assist of type assistant agent with the name assistant and an LLM config. Okay, now you might see here like, oh, why is there no system message like the other one? Well, the reason is because you don't actually need one. There's one provided by default. Every time you actually give this a system message, you're overriding the default system message. So one way you can check that is if you come into assistant agent, go inside, if you come inside the API and we eventually see it. Okay, so you can see here when we initialize an agent, okay, we need the name, right? It's the only one that's uh, not optional. There's a system message that is optional because it gives you a default system message. So if you look up here, there's this long system message that is there by default. And I mean, it's it's good by default. So I don't feel like I need to actually provide one. This will this will do everything I need. And then I create another user agent. So it'd be you or me, uh, give the name user proxy, human input mode terminate. What that means is that I'm never gonna reply until uh, everybody's done. And then, then I can give feedback. So uh, I can just say terminate and then we're done with the whole thing or I can give, I can say something, right? If it was always, that means that every every time there's a conversation, I'm gonna, I can reply. But this is only when um, all the agents feel like they're done talking to each other. Okay, a max consecutive auto reply is 10 before it's done. Um, this is termination message. This is basically saying when I say terminate, we're done completely. The code execution configuration. So. Uh, I give it a working directory working directory that's called planning. So it'll create um, through testing already, but uh, it'll create a folder under your directory called planning and it'll put the code there. Okay, so now we have this function, right? Now, how do we know or who knows to even use the function, right? All we did is define it and we say inside of it that we have two agents talking to each other, but how does that start? Okay, like we're gonna start initiate another chat with the user proxy and the assistant, but I don't see a function anywhere here. Well, there's two ways. We can either register the function with a user agent. Now you have to register the, fun this function has to deal, or has to be a part of a user agent. It can't be a part of the assistant agent. And what we say in here is the user proxy dot register function. So this is an auto gen, this is an auto gen uh, function here. So we say user proxy dot register function. There's a, something called function underscore map. And we want um, the ask planner, which was the definition. We want to assign that to, we like you can give a name here, and but we want it to be assigned to the actual function name ask planner. So you, you don't need to say ask uh, planner on like message here. You just give the name of it ask planner, that's it. So you can either do it this way or inside the user agent, um, you can just define it here as well. Whichever way you want to do, it doesn't matter. I found I found that both always work. I tried both and they both work. Okay, we are almost done before we just test this out and we see how it works. The last thing is we do need to actually initiate a chat. The first chat we initiated was inside of a function, but the file doesn't the file doesn't know to do that, right? Because the function needs to be called. So the user proxy agent we just created initiates a chat with the assistant that we also created, the one that doesn't have a system message. It has it uses the one that's default there. And then the messages suggest a fix to an open good first issue of Flamel. Uh, Autogen is partially based off of Flamel. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and execute this and we'll be back to see how it went. Okay, so it ran and now I'm just gonna go through um, the execution of it. All right, so the first thing was the user proxy to the assistant, so just a fix to open a good first issue of Flamel. So the assistant, you know, creates the message. Um, we create a Python script that we can use to retrieve these. So it uses the GitHub. So this, so you can see this is a Microsoft, you know, repo. So it does this and then we execute the code. And what it does is it gives the issues, the URLs, and then the issue bodies. Okay, it does it does this for quite a few of them. Uh, these aren't errors running the code. This is a part of the actual issue in the repo. All right, 
So we're gonna scroll down through this. Um, there's just a bunch of them. So we'll get to the next step. So after we executed the code, now the assistant, which was the initial assistant AI agent back to the user is suggesting a function call ask planner. This is the one that we created. All right, so the arguments are message. Now we know it only has one argument and it's called message. So this is the message that it's sending. And so this is this is it uh, look, looking more organized. So the user has fetched a list of open issues labeled as good first issue, and there are 18 of them. Which issue should we select to suggest a fix for? Now the planner, back to the planner user, so that was the AI, in the function, we initiated the chat, the planner user initiated the chat with the planner. So now the planner is going to respond back to the planner user. And what it's going to do is it's going to suggest, well, it's going to first take uh, the fourth, the fourth one, because it says it likes things more code related. So it's going to take that issue and it's going to suggest a fix with these steps to solve it. All right. And now what you can see here is we had the print, we had the printouts inside the function, right? I had told you I was going to like, just like, really boring printouts. So about to get the first 10 characters. Uh, well, that's the uh, first 10 characters that you get from uh, the message, All right? This is what it is. And <clears throat> now the response from calling the ask planner, right? This, so this is, this is saying this is the response from the function call. Okay. This, we just got the last one. We only really got one response, but like, let's just say that, um, that we had more than one. We just got the last one, right? So this is it. So now we're going back to the assistant agent is saying back to the original user where we initiated the overall chat with is saying, Hey, here, here's a, a fix for the uh, fourth issue that we found conditional parameter flow to crash, whatever that is. All right. And we had the steps and then here is maybe what we can do to solve it. So it's actually giving a Python code snippet on what what we could do to solve it. Now, this isn't going to solve it, right? There's, there's no way this is actually going to solve it. I don't even know what the real issue is, but, um, and then what, what the user, what the user tried to do is actually tried to execute this code, but it doesn't mean anything, right? It has no idea. Like there's no context given to this. So, uh, after this, really what it does is the, the assistant is telling, oh, I apologize. This was just, this was not meant to be executed as is. It was just a demonstration of what we could do. And that's all it is. And then it kind of, I set the auto replies to 10 different times. So it's going to keep doing this. And eventually I get, um, uh, I get the max token, right? Cause I'm using GPT for it. Now it's like, it's at 81. Now it's at like a 81 92. So it reaches that and then we're done. But this is how the process worked, um, with the AI agents. And if we go over, it had already created this. If we go in here and uh, look at the Python file, this is the code that originally created to retrieve all the issues from the flamel repository. Okay. So it went ahead and created the file for us. Hey, and thanks for getting through the video. I know that was kind of a lot of code explanation and going through something new, potentially, maybe you already knew it, but potentially something new for you um, with functions. And I think that they can be very powerful as a part of the autonomous agency. Even open AI API has said that it can give a more structured model back as a response. Whenever you send, essentially you're sending a system message, but you can manipulate it, right? The nice thing is that uh, sending it and then receiving something, you can do more things with it along the way. Okay. Like I was mentioning before, you can call other APIs, you can store it into a database. Um, you can, you know, those are just a couple, couple simple ideas, but there's, you know, but you know, there's definitely more things that you can do. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next video. Have a wonderful day.